All right, it's two o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Frank, where are your children? Okay, so as you all know, are we ready to start? Yeah. All right, welcome to Chess for Nights. Try not to sit in front of the camera. You know, unless you know, you're pretty like me, then okay. Uh, we're gonna look at two positions today, and then we're gonna talk about the rules. Raise your hand, not you at home. Raise your hand, put your hand down. Raise your hand, the people at home raising their hand. <sighs> Raise your hand if you're playing in the tournament today at 2.30. Aviv's playing, Danny. You're playing, Frank? Good job. Okay, in the tournament, you have to play touch move. Touch a piece, you have to move it. So don't be touching everything. Go, hmm, indeed. If you say indeed enough, we can, you can play in the London Chess Classic later. Okay, now, there are two positions I want to show you, and they're very complicated, but you're chess for knights, right? So you guys are so smart, your brains are going to explode, okay? And, and we're going we're gonna to keep that to a minimum today. Now, this was a game between the Chinese player Ding Lerin, one of the top five players in China, possibly top three, possibly top one. Aviv, what's your opinion? Somewhere yeah, somewhere like that. No, Lee Chow's pretty good. Okay, Matt Larson thinks Ding Lerin will, will win Vikanze. So that's because he's pretty good, because you know, Magnus Carlsen's playing. All right, and black is Michael Adams, the oldest player to ever play chess. He's still younger than me. Dang. Okay, I met Michael Adams before chess existed. Okay, I met him in 1986. Were you at that tournament? No. Why not? <laughs> yeah, you were there. I saw you there. Yeah, I think you got like four out of nine. No. Yeah. Okay, now nah, maybe you got three and a half. All right, so Michael Adams is black, and he's playing Ding Lirin. Whose turn is it? White. Yeah. White. Ah, this is the two o'clock class. Nice. Okay, it's White's turn, because White is in check. Now, not only is he in check, he's in a skewer, okay? You see what I'm saying over here? Yeah. So like if King e4, then he'll lose his knight. Okay, so White played what move? Yes. Um, King c6. King c6 is a good move, but he played a better move. But your move is second best. So you're like the second best player. Who's the second best player? See, there's Carlson, then me. So it's me. You. King e5. King e5. I won a lot of silver medals in chess, but usually my opponents won the gold. And then that was it. King e5. OK. Now, uh, black played knight d8, the losing move. Ah, right? Okay, so let's have a look at the normal move. Yeah. Rook takes e3 check. Did Michael Adams see that was possible? Of course. Then he thought Ding Lirin would play king f6, threatening everything. Too many threats. Like rook f7 check, knight f7, and rook a8 with me. Okay. Turns out, black can draw here, but Michael Adams didn't see the drawing move because it was too hard. He's rated 2750, okay? That's like your ratings if we added them all up. And that's because of Eve's here. Otherwise, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Okay, what's the drawing move for black? It's the craziest move ever. I'll give you a hint. It stops mate, and it stops rook takes pawn. Oh, bathroom's over there. You. But I pointed right to him. What's the problem? <laughs> what? Okay. Knight, knight D8. Knight D8 is okay, but the computer says it loses. So it's not totally okay. Okay. But, but Knight D8 is, that's a move, but it doesn't quite work. There's a crazy move. If it was an easy move, I wouldn't ask you. I would ask the one o'clock class. But it's a two o'clock class, so it's hard. It's so hard a 2700 couldn't find it. Pretty hard. Anyone? Bueller? Mm. Martin? Okay, king to g8, I guess. Well, king to g8 is a move, but it still loses because your f pawn's hanging and check. I mean, it doesn't get mated in one, but it still loses. This move is so crazy, it just might work. 
Someday of evil will solve it. You. Knight C7 is correct. And probably Michael Adams didn't do this because he didn't see Knight C7. He was like, Knight C7, my knight's hanging. Now, Knight C7 does stop mate, you agree, because Knight takes Rook, right? Mm -hmm. And after Rook takes, we play Rook check, forking the Knight of the King, okay? And the computer says, this is a draw, because it's a draw, right? Okay, but Knight C7 is a crazy move. He didn't see that. Okay, instead he played for tricks. You know why the tricks didn't work? Why? Wow, that was a good setup. Good job. You're hired because tricks are for kids. Okay, good job. Yeah, he knew that too. He's been working on that all night. He looked in the mirror and said, "Why? Why?" Okay, Arjun, what were you gonna say? Michael Adams played Knight D8. Okay, now that's the losing move. And Dingler in's like, hey, I'm the best player. I should win. I'm winning, right? That's a good idea, right? Okay. So Dingler in has two moves that look good: Rook D7 and Rook to A8. Which one did he play? He played the better one. We could vote. Should we vote? Yeah. All right. What are you, you're voting for? A8, right? Yeah. All right. What are you? Yeah. What are you voting for? A8. All right. Who says he played Rook A8, the green move? And who says he played Rook D7, the red move? I was about, and I think the abstentions have it. Okay, uh, we don't, we didn't have a quorum, so we'll have to wait a few minutes, right? Okay, and did you bring your taxes with you? No. Anyone? Why not? Did you get a W9? No. Terrible. Okay, White played Rook D7, the only winning move, because it does three things: it attacks the knight, it defends this knight and it attacks this pawn on f7. Also, king e7 is slightly illegal. That's, that's so bad, the one o'clock class is like, no. That's the across the street class. They're like, king e7. <laughs> Even more popular was king e8 for the across the street class. Okay, so Michael Adams, who's losing now, played like 100 tricks in a row. Okay, did Dingler in fall, fall for those tricks? No. no, the last one was really good though. The last trick was so good, the arbiter's like, okay, draw. That was a great trick. Is that what happened? No. Okay, so Michael Adams played rook takes e3 check. Now, when I was having a chess lesson with Matt Larson, and the computer said rook takes e3 is a draw, knight d8 loses, Matt Larson was like, oh yeah, he'll play rook takes e3, Michael Adams is great. Then he played knight d8, and we went, aw. Okay, so the point is, with this position and the next one, the game should have been a draw, but that doesn't mean every move draws. That means if you play perfect, you draw. Most kids, when they get to an end game like this, they move really fast, and then all their moves are terrible. Good players, like Aviv, go, hmm, interesting. Think forever, and then play the perfect way. Okay, so we thought Michael Adams would do that, but he was tired. When you guys play chess, the game takes 30 seconds, right? When these guys play chess, the game takes five and a half hours for one game, okay? So he's tired at the end. And he was the oldest player in the tournament. He's twice as old as his opponent, okay? His opponent's 20 and he's 40, except he's more than 40. All right, so he got tired and he thought he was gonna draw. He played rook check. I wonder what white did. Okay, he played the only legal move. All right, now I'm going to take your knight, and if the knight moves, I'm going to take on f7. So black played the trickiest move ever until the next trick. He played king g7, giving his knight away. Did Dingler in take the free knight and do this? Because he was cold, cold in Vikings, eh? right? You've been there, cold, right? How many Vikings days have you been to? 15? Nice. I've been to four, maybe? Yeah, maybe. All right, so did he play rook takes knight? Is that what he did? No. Half the class is like, yeah, it's a free knight. Okay. If he had taken the knight, what would Michael Adams have done? Arjun, never play f6. f6, checkmate. The computer agrees. 
Okay, that was tricky. Now, black isn't threatening checkmate now because the knight's pinned, the pawn's pinned. Okay, you can't go here because it's illegal. Now, this king doesn't have a lot of squares to go to, does it? It has zero. That's not a lot. Okay, you, you got your calculator with you? Okay, see if zero is a lot. That's more than like half the numbers, right? Okay, so what did white do so his king could escape? Escaping is good. You! Oh, um, F5. He played F5. Now he's threatening pawn takes rook and rook takes knight. And there's no mate anymore. Okay, so now it looks like Michael Adams is going to lose. But I told you he's 2750. So he's tricky, right? Yeah. So he played rook e3 attacking the pawn. Ding Lirin played check. I wonder where Michael Adams moved his king. Maybe he took the pawn. No the one o'clock class said that was fine. Okay, so what did he do? Where'd the king go? Yes. Go, back, um, go to h7. Go to h7. That's what he did. And then Dinglerin was very hungry, so he went yum, 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 and took the knight. Now, white has an extra knight. You, you, you know what I mean? No. Okay. Now, Michael Adams played a move that's so tricky that like if Aviv was white and Aviv didn't see this move, he would be scared by this move. But Aviv would see it, so he wouldn't be scared. Okay? He played rook e4. Very tricky. Confusing the class. So everybody at home is really confused. They're on the floor crying right now. Okay, but the four-year-old Frank is not confused. Frank. Knight takes rook. Knight takes rook. Let's see what the computer has to stay, say about that. Probably some crazy abbreviation that makes no sense. Yeah, that, wh whoever Krogan in there, they should be fired immediately. Yeah, who did that? So that's stalemate because there wasn't room to put him. Of course there was. All right. So that's stalemate because black can't move anywhere. So who wins? White. Nobody. Nobody. All right, if you say white, then where do you go? One o'clock class. class, right. Stalemate is a tie. Nobody wins unless you're playing checkers. Then you're good, right? Playing checkers and you still meet your opponent, you win. But not in chess. So this would be a draw because nobody can win. It's black's turn to move and he can't move. Okay, now white didn't want to stalemate black because white's up a knight. On the other hand, black's threatening checkmate. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you don't want to get checkmated, do you? No. So most of you would take the rook and the game would be a draw, and some of you wouldn't take the rook and you would lose. Ding Lirin found a third option where he wins. That was the best option. And not only did he win, it was the only move that wins. So sometimes in chess, you have one move that draws, otherwise you lose. And sometimes in chess, you have one move that wins. Ding Lirin looked at his score sheet, he was keeping notation, and it said he was rated 2770. And he's like, oh, I should find the winning move then. I'm really high rated, right? Well, make sure when you're playing, you don't look at your score sheet. Don't, don't do it. All right, you. Okay, um, I guess it's rook to h8. Rook to h8, check. It's true, I wouldn't lie to you. Okay, now most of you would take the rook, but Michael Adams did not take the rook. That's why he's 2750 or whatever. What did he do? Yeah. No, he's in check. Oh. Yeah, so he didn't do no checkmate. Uh, hmm, you. Next. Close. That's half right. Yeah. He lost. Checkmate. Yeah, he lost. Yeah. He resigned and cried. Okay. Probably, yeah. He resigned and cried. Good job. The reason he resigned is this is the only legal move, and now that's not stalemate anymore. Yeah. It was stalemate, now it's not. And you'll notice white has an extra knight. 
which is very, comes in handy, okay? And soon white will have three extra queens. So, so black gave up. And rook h8 is the only move that wins. If you take the rook, it's stalemate. And if you let him mate you, then you lose. But Ding Liren, let me ask you a question. When Michael Adams played rook e4, do you think Ding Liren already saw that and he knew he was going to play rook h8? Or he was like, oh no, oh, I have rook h8 winning. That was lucky. What do you think? You think he saw it before or he got lucky? You'll notice people rated 2770 are lucky all the time because they, cause they see stuff. Yeah, yeah, because they see everything. And when they don't see anything, then their rating is 1770. Okay, you, you hear me talking, Danny? All right, Danny's like, I'm 1900, what's going on here? Yeah, he's furious. Can I help you? Um, I have my own computer. You have your own computer? What's its rating? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So that, that game was a nice win yesterday, although it should have been a draw. Okay. What? Adjudicate game. Yeah, 1-0. Okay. Now, this game was played today or yesterday? Yesterday. It was in the Challengers. Those guys are so weak. Who knows? All right. Now, in the B group, okay, they have another tournament. The first tournament is all the best players in the world and Von Whaley. Man, if you didn't laugh at all, wow. The second group is very suspicious. Those guys are slightly better than me. And they still put their games on the internet. Okay, although in this game, white was not better than me. Okay, now this game, this position should be a draw, just like the last game, because both sides have the same stuff. Two rooks, two bishops, one king, and four pawns, right? In most of the games in the B group, one side is up a king because they don't play so well. But in this game, they both have one king. Does that make sense, Frank? Yeah. Frank's like, yeah. Okay, so here, white decided to make a mistake every move and lose the game. Okay, not a good idea. But white had a good excuse. Okay, when you play chess, occasionally use a chess timer. Who's done that before? You use a clock. Okay. They were using a clock, and they didn't have much time left. Their time was about to run out. So they had to move really fast. Okay. So what white should do is go, yum, 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 take a pawn. Okay. Then everybody trades everything. They agree to a draw, and everybody's happy. Instead, white played bishop to g2. Okay. Well, black moved first, but we won't talk about that. So white was thinking... Black will take, and then I'll take back somehow. Okay? But white learned a valuable lesson. And the lesson is, when your pieces are pinned, that's not good. So what did black do to pin this bishop? So the bishop couldn't move without losing a rook. Losing a rook is bad if you're taking notes. Arjun, rook to g4. Now if the bishop moves, black plays rook takes rook. If the bishop doesn't move, then the bishop never moves, which isn't good. Okay. Now, white's king is in trouble, because that king doesn't have a lot of squares to go to. You can't go to any of those squares, can you? So if this rook went down here at some point, that king has nowhere to go. Conversely, black has so many squares with a king, black's confused. That's the safest king ever. Okay. So not only is white's king in trouble, white's bishop is pinned. Okay, so white made further bad moves because then the game would end quickly and then go to Froyo. White was very upset because this game was played in the Netherlands and they don't have a Froyo near the tournament, right? If they were playing here, they'd go to Froyo after. So you've been to the Singfield Cup with Nakamura and Carlson, right? When their game's over, they run to Froyo, right? And he's like, yeah. Okay, so white played Bishop takes f6. I wonder what Aviv's going to have soon. Froyo. Okay. And the reason white played bishop f6, and also bishop f6, is now the king can escape. Okay? So if there's a check, my king can walk up the board. When you're playing chess, and there's a lot of pieces on the board, do you want to walk your king up the board? No. No. What would dire straits do? They would do the walk of life. Did you know the answer? All right, good. 
OK, so black played rook g3 check, and white's like, no problem. I saw that. King to d4. My king is safe. Nobody can checkmate me. OK? My, nothing wrong with my king. Are these pieces defending the white king? No, terrible, right? And black has a bishop stopping the king, a pawn and a bishop stopping the king, a rook stopping the king. Uh, that, that king is pretty bad. Okay, so what did black do in this position? Two answers are acceptable because they mate equally quickly. Yes? Uh, rook d3, that's right. And now, I think that's checkmate, and the class is over. There's no legal moves, right? Checkmate. In fact, this was a kids' tournament. I guarantee you most of you would say checkmate, even though it's not checkmate. Yeah. No. What, what does white do, Frank? In all your years of chess experience, what would you do with white? Um, right. Now, you're too old to answer that question. Are you even allowed in this class? Aren't you yeah. too old? You're not a kid anymore, are you? 16 and a half? No, I said six and a half. Six and a half? That's much older than him. Also, you were in my tournament in 1986, so I don't know if you were six and a half. So white play king e5, right? Now I have a question. Where can the white king move? Nowhere. Nowhere is correct. So this was bug house. Black would have about 37 checkmates, if you know what bug house is. Yeah, then every move is made. I, I, you could put a knight here, knight here, knight here, queen here, rook here, pawn here. Knight, every move's made. Okay, but this isn't bug house. This is real life. Okay, and this game was played yesterday, and white was born yesterday, so lost. Okay, well, I only see one move that's check. Do you see any moves that are check? No. Check. That must be checkmate, right? No. Why not? Ah, oh, the king takes the bishop. Then, then white would win. White is an active king. If only black had a move so that the king couldn't take the bishop there. Uh, hold on, hold on, I'm thinking. Uh, oh, hold on, I'm thinking. You in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rook to d8 does defend d6. Unfortunately, my bishop would take you. And then there's no Froyo. Uh, Martin. Okay. Rook to um, b6. Rook to b6. Same idea as rook to d8. Now we're threatening checkmate, and there's a lot of good defenses for white. Right? Lots of ways to stop it. The class is so quiet. Arjun, how do you stop me? Bishop E7, X clam. I think that is X clam. All right, so white didn't play Bishop E7. Guess what white did? Arjun, white resigned. Bishop E7, I just take it, and then I go back and meet you. So that's a very safe king, right? No. And these pieces are helping his king, aren't they? No. But look at black. Black's like Morphe Plus. He's got the rook going on, the bishop, the rook, this bishop. All pieces are attacking white's king. What's funny about this game, just like the last game, is that in this position, computer said equal. Should be a draw. And then white got mated in four moves. Chess is tough, isn't it? Yeah. And these players are rated 2,400, 2,500, 2,600. So when you get better at chess and your rating is really high, then you can get mated too. Oh. No, no. But even the grandmasters and best players in the world, sometimes they make mistakes, especially near the end of the game because their time is running out. But if you have time on your clock, you should think in positions like this because there's so many pieces on the board. And white tried to trade pieces, and black said, now I'm going to pin your piece instead. Okay, and then white got greedy and got checkmated. Oh, too bad. The bishop's coming here with mate, which I like because it's a retreat, right? I like retreats. You with some comment. Okay. Um, you have a good defense? Why do I have F5? F5 here? Yeah. Checkmate. Oh, yeah. 
the computer said so. Yeah. The truth hurts. No. You could also take my bishop no. and then check me. Man, chess is hard. I got, I got the same meat no matter what you do. Yeah. Or you could give all your pieces away and then get mated. Also a good option. Okay, if you are playing in the 230 tournament, because it starts at 230, hopefully you've entered, otherwise Mike Cummer's gonna put the hammer down. You should line up and go with our associate, Danny Machuca, that guy there with the shirt on, and, and you can play in the tournament. It starts at 2.30, which is in four minutes. Or you could go that way on your own, I don't know.